Hello and welcome to another episode of Choo Choo is a Ranker. On today's episode, we're going to be discussing Echo and the Bunnymen, which were a band who came up during the post-punk wave in the early 80s, along with bands like The Cure. During the early 80s, the band actually became a leading light of post-punk, scoring quite a few hits in their home country of England. After their fifth album in 1987, the singer Ian McCulloch left the band and went solo, and the band actually recruited a new singer, Noel Burke, for their next album, which came out in 1990. They only released one record with Noel Burke before quietly disbanding. Then, at the height of Britpop in 1997, the band reconvened with their original singer, Ian McCulloch, but sadly, sans their drummer, Peter Frittis, who unfortunately died in a motorcycle accident. This led to a string of reunion albums, Uh, the first couple of which were actually fairly successful but then little by little the band started to slide into relative obscurity now as for my own fandom of Echo and the Bunny Men I like Echo and the Bunny Men a good bit I have very uh, fond memories of you know being a teenager during the Britpop era and getting into their music Um, yeah I like a lot of their records as yours here when we go through the list but I don't think Echo and the Bunny Men are quite in my elite tier of favourite bands but still yeah I like them so without further ado, let's be complete rankers and rank up a storm. These are Echo and the Bunny Men's albums, ranked from worst to best. So coming in, last place, dead last, we have The Stars, The Oceans and The Moon, which is Echo and the Bunny Men's most recent album from 2018. So this is kind of halfway between studio album and compilation because they've taken a bunch of their old classic tracks and re-recorded them in quote-unquote transformed versions. Uh, There's also two original songs on this one too. So yeah... Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush. This is fucking terrible. It's absolutely awful. Yeah, what a way to piss on your legacy. Uh, Almost without fail, these versions are just much worse uh, uh, than the original versions. Sometimes ridiculously so. It's almost like a parody. When you have like a jazz piano version of Rescue, why? Like a hotel lounge version of Rust, why? Like a glockenspiel version of Nothing Lasts Forever. Why? It, uh, this one is a real, this is a real head scratcher and an absolutely awful, terrible album. Not much to really save this one. Uh, Seven Seas, uh, it's got an okay version on here. Sounds like a kind of like sea shanty version, which suits the theme of the song. That's okay, but still not as good as the original. Bedbugs and Ballyhoo is kind of okay, but in the middle of the song, you have Ian McCulloch suddenly shouting, Scoot him up! It, uh, why? Terrible. Just completely, like, run like the plague. Like, avoid this one. Or if the opportunity presents itself, just set it on fire. So next up, we have Reverberation from 1990. So this is the album that the band made with Noel Burke instead of Ian McCulloch as the singer. Uh, yeah, and it's, a, it's another bad one, basically. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush again. But this one starts off okay and fools you into thinking that it's actually going to be a good album because uh, the opening tracks, Gone, 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 Enlighten Me, and also King of Your Castle, which is another early track, are pretty, pretty decent. Um, King of Your Castle in particular has got some really cool Eastern riffs on it. I quite like that one. But after that, it takes an insipid slide into a kind of pastiche of 80s R.E.M., but not good like 80s R.E.M., like really, really terrible, like like jangle rock at its absolute most blandest. Plus, it has a terrible production on it. It's got that production that was very prevalent in the year of 1990, where every single note sounds like it's been wiped and polished with a jerry rag. Everything's way too clean. And it just it just doesn't work. It just makes for a really boring album. Um, the songwriting is also pretty bad uh, on the back half of the record. There's just nothing interesting here. I mean, it's not even bad in a kind of interesting way. It's just boring. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't like this record. I, I, you, you go check it out if you really want to hear what Noel Burke sounds like. But yeah, you can definitely give this one a pass. <laughs> So 
So next up, we have The Fountain from 2009. This was a very personally disappointing album for me because it's the follow-up to Siberia from 2005, which, spoiler alert, is one of the very best reunion-era Echo and the Bunnymen albums, and there was a feeling that maybe they could sustain their quality and kick into the kind of a next phase of their career, but no, this album put paid to that because it's not very good. That said, it does open strong, and the first half of it, it's, it's a pretty strong album. Um, the opening track and lead single, Think I Need It Too, just a perfect slice of FM rock, definitely one of their best late period singles. Do You Know Who I Am has some really bouncing pop energy on it, I really like that one. Shroud of Turin is a classic kind of autopilot, ballady type Echo and the Bunny Men song, but all of the components of it just make something that is familiar and satisfying, that's a pretty good one. Uh, Life of a Thousand Crimes has some of Will Sargent's stuttering guitar work on it. That's pretty cool. But then the back half of the album, nothing. Nothing. Just really boring, insipid FM radio rock. Like I said on the previous entry, it's not even interesting in a bad way. It's just really boring. Everlasting, never endless. The oldness of gods. I mean, does anybody actually remember those songs or how they go? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Yeah, half of a good album, half of a bad album. Consistency, people. Save something for the back end. So, yeah, another one you can skip, I think. Flowers from 2001 is next. So on this record, the band take a sudden left turn into 1960s psychedelia. Uh, they go the whole hog on this as well. This isn't a half measure. Every single song on the album is designed to, to keep giving you that soundscape. So for that reason, the production here is completely maxed out uh, as you know it needs to be because that's what psychedelic music is. It's just like an abundance of just constant sound. Lots of really florid guitars on this. And uh, actually, there is some really good material on here. Both singles, It's Alright, Make Me Shine are really good. Make Me Shine in particular is a very pristine example of what a 1960s psychedelic pop song should be. Best song on the album is Hide and Seek, which kind of remembers that Echo and the Bunny Moon were in fact a post-punk band at one point in their career, and kind of combines that sound with some light sort of 1960s Zephyr-like keyboards. I really enjoy that one. And uh, actually, if you take a lot of these songs out and listen to them in isolation a lot of the material here is all right but unfortunately when you put it all back on to the same album it's just like way too much that that again that constant production style of everything just being maxed out and overcooked gets really overbearing and as you kind of shift into the final third of the album it's just all congealed into this kind of gloopy hazy indistinct mess where it's very difficult to tell one song from the other and it just gets again overwhelming and frankly boring uh, i think this album really needed a bit of restraint you know that old adage sometimes less is more and this record really needed to be kind of reined in and it needed space to breathe like desperately and it just doesn't do it and that's a real turn off for this record unfortunately so yeah individually some good songs on here, but overall, mm, it's a bit of a mess. Next up, we have Meteorites from 2014, which is a late period echo on the Bunny Men record, obviously. Uh, this one, they return back to their kind of post-punk roots, and new for this album is a type of shoegazy guitar work. Uh, it's got lots of reverb, lots of echo on it. Like, the whole album is absolutely drenched in that sound and makes the whole thing kind of cohesive and sound like one vision, which, you know, it is. And to be honest, that really works for them uh, at this point in their career. I still think that this record is a bit of a footnote, and, you know, it's never going to make anybody's favorite Echo on the Bunny Man record. But for what it is, I think it's pretty damn good. Lots of good material on this, too. The opener Meteorites has some really good orchestral stuff uh, going on on that one. Holy Moses, decent single. Constantinople, again, those Eastern guitar riffs that Echo on the Bunny Man often play with. Awesome stuff. This Is this a breakdown? Really catchy. Burn It Down, again, really catchy, really love the echo and reverb on that. Best song on the record for me personally is Explosions. Explosions, 
Really catchy, epic ballad. Love that. And the final two tracks, Market Town and New Horizons, are also really good. Market Town is like really extended. It's over seven minutes. Has a lot of really good guitar work on it. So yeah, I personally think this is a pretty fantastic record. And just talking about it here makes me wonder why I don't have this higher on the list. And I guess ultimately that is because as good as it is, it just still feels like a footnote. You know what I mean? Like, again, this is just kind of like an afterthought in their career, but a very good one. So yeah, if you like Echo and the Bunny Men, this one's definitely worth checking out. I recommend it. The band's first reunion era album, Evergreen, from 1997 is up next. This is one of the more iconic and famous Echo and the Bunny Men records, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best one, and I definitely think that's the case. Uh, this record has some really stunning highs, but also some low points. So usually I talk about the positive stuff first, but this time I'm going to start with the negative stuff, uh, because many people are probably wondering why I have this ranked here. Yeah, so my main problem with this album is a lot of the material on it is very similar. Uh, so take, for example, In My Time, I'll Fly Tonight, Just a Touch Away. Individually, decent songs, but they're all, again, as I've already mentioned, incredibly similar to each other. They all have that same kind of mid-paced drum beat. They all have the same type of arpeggiated guitar on the verses and the piano and the major chords in the chorus. It makes everything kind of sound the same very difficult to distinguish each song and a lot of these songs are paired up Altamont has stuttering guitar the title track Evergreen has stuttering guitar on it Empire State Halo, Too Young to Kneel two songs that are back to back and have exactly the same type of atmospheric soundscape individually everything on here is alright apart from the closing track Forgiven which is crap um, that's just boring one of the weakest most annoying closes I've ever heard in my life actually I really do not like Forgiven fuck that song but yeah <laughs> anyway that's my main problem um, a lot of this stuff is is very similar and it has the same type of production and sound design across the record uh, there isn't much in the way of variety so there you go that's why it's ranked here but as I said the highs are really high so let's get into them don't let it get you down the opener despite the fact that it's similar to Baseball Bill really catchy stuff love that one i want to be there when you come <laughs> phantom what a rude title i want to be there when you come jesus but yeah a really pristine slice of uh just brit pop that's pretty good uh again i'll fly tonight in my time just a touch away i complained about them being similar and they are but individually all great empire state halo absolutely fantastic bit of post-punk really love that probably my favorite off the album um, title track Evergreen, it's stuttering guitars, really cool. Evergreen, ever, ever, ever. you know, yeah, it's great. Um, but oh, wait, I just lied. I just said Empire State Halo is probably my favorite off the album. Of course, that's not true because Dead Center, you have nothing lasts forever. Echo and the Bunny Men's last top 10 single in the UK, it's absolutely fantastic, uh, and uh, definitely a big reason why this is ahead of meteorites on this list that song is just brilliant like a perfect pristine slice of echo and the bunny men love the string work in that the way that the violins crescendo during the second chorus absolutely spine chilling stuff fantastic so yeah this record is not perfect by any means but its highs are high enough that you really need to go check it out Next up, we have Echo and the Bunny Men's self-titled album from 1987, often referred to as the Grey Album. So uh, this was the last record that, of the original run with Ian McCulloch after this record, he left the band. On this record, they turn in a much more new wavy direction. There's a lot more synths uh, on this record and definitely a lot more focus on straight kind of 1980s pop music. This actually gets pretty maligned uh, by the critics and often forgotten about by the fans too. It's kind of like you have the first four albums and then this one, like which kind of stands alone on its own little plateau. But, you know, I like the record. It, it, it's good. There's a lot of good, strong pop material on this. In fact, I think the first eight songs on this record are, are pretty much 
all decent. Yeah, a lot of decent material on here. Opener, the game, one of the catchiest Echo and the Bunny Men singles, fantastic stuff. Bed Bugs and Ballyhoo, really weird, really idiosyncratic. Bombers Bay, one of my absolute favorite Echo and the Bunny Men songs. I love the synth work on that. Super, super catchy. Lips Like Sugar, fantastic single. Great guitar riffs on that. Lost and Found, lots of energy on that one. And New Direction, you know, higher and higher. Kissing the Spider, like great stuff. So yeah, a lot of good material. Some very strong hooky pop songs. Very enjoyable. Uh, it's not perfect. There is quite a bit of filler on this record. I mean, songs like Over You, All In Your Mind are all right. You know, they're not bad songs or anything. They're decent, but they definitely don't quite match up to the quality of the songs that I mentioned, you know, in a, in a more positive light. And unfortunately, the last three songs on this record, Blue Blue Ocean, Satellite, In My Life, very forgettable, you know, so definitely the album doesn't end strong. But overall, I just think this is a really glorious 1980s pop record. Coming in at number six, we have What Are You Going to Do With Your Life from 1999. The second of Echo and the Bunny Men's reunion albums. So, this one is a really divisive uh, record amongst critics and fans. Some people really dig this one, and some people absolutely loathe this one. And I, I can kind of understand uh, personally. I have huge nostalgia for this record, so maybe I'm a bit biased. And yeah, I really do love this one. Um, this is one of my favorites, but I understand why some people would hate this because this is Echo and the Bunny Men's sort of old man relaxed kind of autumnal album um everything is kind of slow paced there's not much energy here it's all kind of really really kind of reflective and melancholic uh, i can understand how some people feel that this is boring and to be honest there are times when even i feel it's boring and uh, i just don't want to listen to this record at all but there are other times where this record would absolutely just hit the spot when I'm in the mood to to love it, I do love every single song on this uh, opener. What are you going to do with your life? Nice acoustic opening. Again, those warm autumnal vibes. Rust is one of the greatest Echo and the Bunny Men songs ever. It's like a supercharged version of Nothing Lasts Forever with lots of really cool Britpop guitars and sweeping string arrangements. Brilliant. Get in the car. That brilliant stuttering Will Sargent guitar style nicely displayed on that. Baby Rain, super catchy. Uh, when It All Blows Over, love the trumpets on that one. Absolutely fantastic, really good stuff. And the final track, Fools Like Us, which is one of my very, very favorite Echo and the Body Men songs. Super nostalgic for me, like got great memories of like sitting in my house, uh, drinking too much Dr. Pepper and playing Mario Kart 64 with the volume down with my brother. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I love everything about that song. Uh, it's build up the moment in the middle eight where it just seems to spike through the roof. It's outro of all the guitar effects, brilliant string arrangements on that. Fantastic stuff. I, I absolutely adore that song. Look for that on my uh, Echo and the Bunny Men song ranking at the end of the video. So yeah, overall, I just really love this record. Again, it, it needs a time and a place, but I think you should definitely give this one a shot because I personally love it. So kicking off the top five with Crocodiles from 1980, the band's debut album. So to be honest, I don't have that much to say about this record because I think it's just a very simple punk album. Um, it hasn't quite lent into the gothic stylings that would become more apparent on the next couple of albums and define Echo and the Bunny Men's sound. But everything here is pretty great. Um, you know, opener going up fantastic atmospheric opener then you have a bunch of really short punk songs stars of stars pride monkeys crocodiles nice stuff you have a couple of echo and the bunny man classics after that rescue with its chiming guitars and villas terrace with its booming drums pictures on my wall was the band's debut single i think i'm not 100 percent sure about that and I'm, I'm too lazy to check but i do believe that was the the band's debut single good song either way all that jazz has fantastic funky groovy bass work on it 
and the closing track Happy Death Men has this really cool arrangement of over layered drums sounds really booming uh, Peter Frittis sounds like an octopus on that so so cool so yeah this is just a really good album I think it sounds punchy and fresh uh, it doesn't have the hang ups of some early 80s records uh, you know, I think it's aged very well for a debut and it shows off the potential of the band. I think it's solid from start to finish and what more could you want from a debut? Good stuff. Next up, we have Heaven Up Here from 1981, the band's second album. So this pushes on the sound from the debut nicely. It's very clinical, very sterile sounding, very angular, like a machine. And they're really leaning into the post-punk on this one. This is a pretty, pretty dark record, actually. Um, yeah, some post-punk classics on this one. The opener, Show of Strength, again, really kind of angular and sterile sounding really cold like sounds absolutely fantastic over the wall with its jumbled drums over the wall and they got that absolutely classic line you know i'm walking in the rain to celebrate this misery oh fantastic stuff that one uh the single a promise good stuff uh, the Disease is a post-punk standard. I, I can't count the amount of times I've played that on the guitar. Absolutely fantastic song. All My Colors, also referred to as Zimbo. Another really kind of dour, dark post-punk song. So yeah, those are the classics on this one. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And those classics alone are enough to put this at number four on the list. But, you know, the other songs have like a kind of funky, angular vibe to them uh, with a hip heaven up here no dark things like it's like a juxtaposition of the funkiness and the angular sort of post-punk nature make those really alluring stuff um i do think there's a little bit of uh, uh weak material in here especially the last two tracks turquoise days and all i want i don't think the album ends particularly strong but yeah the defining songs on this are just towering post-punk mountains if you like dark records this is an absolute must listen Brilliant stuff. Next up in the bronze medal position, we have Siberia from 2005, without question, Echo and the Bunny Men's best reunion era album. And yeah. I know, I know, I can hear you already clacking on the keyboards. I'm going to take shit in the comments section for putting this above heaven up here. I tell you that. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love this record. I think it's absolutely gangbusters. I think it's brilliant. Uh, not that much to say about it, I guess, because this album is just Echo and the Bunny Men play you the hits. But, man, they play it so well. This is just everything you could want from an Echo and the Bunny Men record. Uh, tons of fantastic ballads on this, all because of you days in the margin everything kills you just really zeroing in on the band's strong points like i think those kind of anthemic ballads are when the band is absolutely at its best like nothing asks forever or rust or the tracks that i just mentioned from siberia brilliant brilliant stuff a good reason why i like echo and the bunny man so much also a bunch of nice rockers on this stormy weather the opening track and single good stuff siberia sideways eight nice kind of stuttering guitars on those really love those songs scissors in the sand the penultimate song really heavy heavy rocking song maybe the heaviest song that echo and the bunny men ever made absolutely rules they should not be rocking that hard when they're old codgers um they're gonna break their hips rocking out like that so <laughs> great stuff pantheon drive classic will Sargent guitar lines on that just yeah fantastic immediately nostalgic and sort of autopilot but in all the right ways so yeah i just absolutely love this record um this was a real return to form and made the subsequent album the fountain like truly disappointing for me but yeah love this one listen to it all the time just fantastic record go check it out <laughs> Next up, we have the silver medal position going to Porcupine from 1983, the band's third album. Now, to be honest, 
the the margin between this and number one is incredibly slim. I think on any given day they could switch places depending on my feeling. I love absolutely both these records pretty much on an identical level, but I'm gonna go with the classic and put you know what at number one. Um, not really a spoiler, is it? Let's be honest. But yeah. Getting back to Porcupine, I absolutely fucking love this one. It's one of my favorite post-punk albums of all time. This one is just so dark and sinister and messed up. It's like really almost disturbing uh, uh, how dark it is and the soundscape and the nightmarish atmospherics it kind of delivers to you. Like excellent stuff full of really, really fantastic tracks. Um, starts off really catchy actually with the cutter like grandiose epic 1980s anthemic single brilliant uh was one of the band's biggest hits uh top 10 single in the uk actually their first top 10 single in the uk so in a way i think that was their big breakout uh really good stuff awesome song back of love love the jumble drums on that and the kind of really gnarly post-punk guitar on it ah, fantastic stuff like really really dark clay Oh, I love that song. It's almost like like it was written to be pretty, but then they just decided, oh, this is too nice, and they just took it to a really dark place with those huge, like, feedback riffs and oh, just the discordant guitar parts on it, and oh, just so cool, just really sinister. Porcupine with its sudden change in the middle, like it, it's going along one direction and then suddenly changes to an anthemic kind of not anthemic because it's really echoey and weird just like a kind of like a weird sudden change in the mid song really awesome love that heads will roll just a straight up mosh inducing rocker love that one super catchy i say that too much that word super catchy i gotta i gotta, I gotta find some new new descriptive words but yeah super catchy heads will roll <laughs> gods will be gods absolutely maxes out the mixing desk um, and that's like uh, a microcosm for the whole album actually this is one of those records where if you're listening on headphones you can hear something new every time because there's like so many hidden details within the tracks I think it's really sonically interesting this record great stuff and the closing track in bluer skies again super catchy and those uh, <laughs> has these really cool like feedback riffs I really enjoy that so yeah I, I love this record I think it's got a nice experimental edge to it I think it's weird and messed up. This is the sound also of a band falling apart. The band were all kind of at each other's throats during the making of this. But yeah, I just think it's a really interesting, fantastic, classic post-punk record. I absolutely love it. Great stuff. So here we are, finally, standing together at the top of the mountain. The gold medal is of course going to go to Ocean Rain from 1984, the band's fourth studio album. This is a surprise to absolutely no one, as this is the band's most iconic and famous album. But it's iconic and famous for a reason, and that reason is it absolutely freaking rules. Uh, this album plays with space. A lot of the Echo and the Bunnymen albums that I've already mentioned, one of the faults on them was they were a bit too cluttered, a bit too overcooked, but this one is the opposite way. It really uses silence and, and quietness to its advantage, pulling out like frisions of atmosphere from all the different tracks. And talking about the tracks, there's not a bad song on this entire record. Everything on it is great. Uh, wonderful string compositions across the whole record because uh, that's the other aspect of this as well as the silence and, and like the minimalism of it you also have the string arrangements which really lend it a kind of unique atmosphere you got some really great jangle singles on here silver and seven seas absolute bunnyman standards classics just setting the smiths up for the success that they would have with stuff like the queen is dead fantastic songs uh, of course you have the huge hit the killing moon just they're kind of many men's most famous song um i'd actually for me personally even though it's like echo the most famous song if i'm being honest i don't like that one as much as most people i think it's a good song i just don't think it's their best song whereas you know most people are just like oh echo and the bunny men they're killing moon is like don't yeah don't you know another song except for the killing moon because you know they have stronger material they do fight me um 
Some some typical madness on this record of Thorn of Crowns. C -c -c cauliflower. C -c -c cabbage. It's like, what? <laughs> but I, I have no idea what the fuck he's talking about in that song, but I love it. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, other great stuff. Yo Yo Man, um, My Kingdom, Nocturnal Me. You know, I could go in depth on these songs, but there's no point because they all sort of sound similar in the same vein using that space and beautiful string arrangements. And I would just be sycophantically slathering over these songs. Everything on this record is just great, and you just owe it yourself to uh, go out and listen to this record. I will highlight the best track on the album, which of course is the closing track and title track, Ocean Rain. Just one of the greatest ballads ever written in the history of music. It, it's perfect. Like, nails the themes of the record just perfectly. The minimalism, the slow build up, the ex sudden explosion of the strings, Ian McCulloch's really emotional delivery of the lyrics his way of singing like oh just it's one of the most perfect emotionally stirring songs of all time like it's just an absolute classic even if you're not going to get into Echo and the Bunny Men just seek out that one song seek out the song Ocean Rain because you owe it to yourself just to hear such a, such an amazing track um fantastic stuff so there we are that's my Echo and the Bunny Men list, but that might not be your list. Please sound off in the comment section and uh, tell me why Reverberation is actually the great lost Echo and the Bunny Men classic, and that I'm a complete idiot for putting it solo on the list. Like, share, subscribe, and all that kind of other YouTube jazz. Stay tuned for my top 10 Echo and the Bunny Men songs at the end of the video, but most importantly, just keep on ranking.